looking at and reviewing the Dungeons and Dragons, um, uh, an older model from them, one of their limited edition models, the Frost Giant Ravenger. Uh, and this is sort of an interesting video because this is, of course, a D&D video because we're doing a D&D mini. Um, but the real goal and focus of this video is to build some more giants for my uh, Sons of Behemoth army in Age of Sigmar. So uh, because I can't stream two different topics and I figured if I streamed in Warhammer, people might get a little offended because it wasn't really a Warhammer model. Um, this is where we find ourselves. So uh, I wanted to do a uh, quick uh, review of the model uh, and then also do a little bit of building it. Um, this is a resin model, so I got my wash ready to wash down the model and wash down the pieces. Um, we're going to see what it is. Now, this is one of their limited edition models, so the idea here is that it's limited to 1,500. Um, and it's pretty hefty, and this is the collector series. This is something that they do from time to time, I think. Uh, I want to say they have at least one collector series model a year, but that's probably more. Um, I just started knowing about these. What's kind of cool about the collector series is that they're you know higher grade models. They tend to be a little bit more embellished. They tend to be a little bit more um, high end. Um, and I'm gonna try to do more reviews of some of them. Uh, I'm trying to get my hands on one of, one of my all time favorite characters, which is Strahd, since we play uh, a lot of our RPG nights in the Curse or Realm of Strahd, um, aka if you are an old D and D player, the Realm of Ravenloft. Um, but that's, you know, so I'm looking to try to get that model, uh, and see if I can get a few other models, uh, within that range. But, uh, I happen to see this, um, and it's funny, at the time that I bought this, uh, I was trying to get a pretty cost-effective giant for potentially some scenario gameplay, um, but then it took on a whole nother meaning because, uh, between Kings of War, where I have the Northern Alliance army, um, and then I also now have the Sons of Behemoth, he's gonna get a lot of cross-play traction, um, if you will. Uh, you can see, uh, it'll, it tells you on the back, uh, giving you a little bit of a size, so 100% size. So he will be slightly smaller than my Mega Gargant, which should be around the same size that our, um, same size that our uh, other GW Giants come in at, with the exception of the Forge World Giant. The Forge World Giant is a huge, it's a huge model. Um, but, uh, we will see, we will see what that looks like. So a uh, pretty large scale model, um, probably going to build him. Not completely sure about the base. We got to, I'm going to do a base comparison on the mega garden to see if I can put him on this, uh, icy base. Uh, I assume the base is separate from the figure, but we'll see. Uh, and I want to give a shout out for this guy. Um, and I forgot to give a shout out on my last video, uh, for the mega gargan, but, uh, I want to give a shout out to the folks at undiscovered realms. If you're in the New York area, uh, it is a hobby shop, a little ways down from New York city. Um, uh, they do model stuff. They do magic. They do Pokemon. They do dragon ball, super, uh, card game. They do Funko pops. Uh, they are awesome guys. Uh, they have a website. So if you go to undiscovered realms.com, uh, you can check out their inventory. They'll deliver anywhere in the United States. I always like to give them a shout out because uh, I wouldn't have been able to get this model without them. Uh, specific, and that goes for my Mega Gargan, for all my GW stuff. So they are awesome, awesome guys. Want to give them their kudos and shout out. Uh, and hopefully, when COVID gets a little bit more under control, we might be doing some live events or things with them. Um, and we'll see what happens. All right, let's take a look at this model. All right. Now, these are limited to 1500, so these are technically collectibles so i am opening up i am unboxing a collectible which i don't usually do this but we're gonna see what happens so you can see uh our now this is a i should point this out this is a resin model from them and you can see uh-huh and as always, models tend to bend. That's the axe part. So everything is individually wrapped. Um, so that's his torso. Yeah, so he is probably... I, you know what? Well, it's too late. I open him now. Um, 
he is not going to come in at a Mega Gargan size. He is, oh, he's very puny. He is a puny giant in comparison. Oh, but Jesus, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's not going to be a very tall figure. Um, I, yeah, he's only going to, so that's, oh, wait, no, that's, his head is not on there. All right, let's open these up. I think he's going to be a, like, he is going to be a little bit more of a pygmy giant. So I don't know if it'll work for my Mega Gargan. Uh, he'll definitely work for the Northern Alliance for my uh, Kings of War stuff, but he's not going to, he may not, he may not work as well. Oh, yeah, his head's on there, too. Yeah, so he's, he's probably not going to work. Um, yeah, because he's coming in. So he is the equivalent of a um a giant fig in the in the realm of that is not a hundred percent is that a hundred percent no way uh maybe it is all right so let's just see what he stacks up against the mega gargant let's see if i could even use him for what i was gonna i mean uh he can I mean, I think the, the, the GW Giants are um, a little bit beefier. Let's see. So if we if we put them with the Mega Gargan... Oh, oh, geez. It's hard because everybody's so big. Yeah, I guess so. I guess he could work out. I don't know. <laughs> he he might not be able to work out. All right, sorry guys. I don't, I'm like trying to do stuff off camera. Yeah, I don't know. Um, because that's the problem. Like I was trying to give some size comparison with another model, but um, because G like so ah Jesus Christ, everything's falling out of my hands today. Yeah, so like that's a goblin, which is, it's still pretty big, and a and a guy would be twice as big as that. So. It, it's still a fairly large model. Like, he is fairly large. Because um, the... What was it? The other giants in GW are... Um, they're... Uh, they're not on... They're, they're giant... They're not behemoths, which is that base. They're on the... They're on the smaller base. They're on the oval bases. So I think if you stack him up against the oval bases, he's probably the right size. Um, and you know what? I just realized I might be able to use a hero click model for another giant. Which I just realized. I didn't realize it until just now. Oh. Oh no. Oh wait, was that some... That was very dense. And you see, now these are all, like I said, um, they are resin pieces. So, uh, we've, we've done resin on here before. Resin, you definitely want to, um, uh, you want to make sure that you do it, do wash it, because it has that protective coating usually on it. Yeah, he's still, like I said, definitely can use it for the Northern Alliance guy. He's 100% good for that. Not, no question uh, that he is good for that. I don't like that they do, like, these individual wraps, especially for these pieces, because you have a really good chance of bending them. If you're not careful. So I probably would say use a knife. Um, but very easy model to put together. Or will be easy. Let's see. Did they make it well? Yeah, they made it pretty well. I mean, it's very few pieces, which I like that. It's like it, the whole model together is like four pieces. So that is already 100. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to get my magic box out of the way. Although, very funny because it's all wizard products. <laughs> now, I always forget that. I always forget that Wizards of the Coast owns uh, uh, owns uh, uh, owns uh, bleh, bleh, can't say things. Dungeons and Dragons and Magic. So, um, so we're just going to do what we've talked about on other occasions. So I just got some soapy water here. I'm just washing the pieces. Um, you want to do that so that because
because, uh, like I said before, what happens is there's a protective film or a treatment that resin gets. So it's kind of crazy, but resin, uh, they mold it and then they hit it with light to harden it. Um, and there's a there's like a chemical that goes onto it. So what the water does is it actually gives it porous properties. Um, so you can actually malleably use it. And what you may not notice or may notice is that little um, little resin particles are actually going into this water. Um, so that's that stuff that we're getting off the model. So you're basically washing the model and you'll feel it. Like when you do it, the base of the soap will make it feel a little bit different than when you uh, were doing it. So. You, you will feel the difference. You will feel the difference, and um, it'll feel, it, 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 uh, best way to describe it, it feels rougher after you wash it. It, it doesn't feel as smooth. It leaves it, that sheen or that shine kind of goes off of it, which is interesting. See, it, it's probably hard to tell now, but if you look at the pieces, they, they may look a little duller, but they definitely feel duller. Like when I touch it, um, it feels like, it almost feels now more like plastic as opposed to the resin that it is. And you'll see, and if you don't do this, you will totally see it because what will happen is your primer and other things will not um, sit well on here. And see, like this is a good example. You can see this one. See how shiny it looks? See how now that I wash these, they don't look shiny anymore? They look dull. That's because I took that cur that coating off of the model. That's what the soapy water did. And actually, you can see in this one, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in for a little bit longer. Now I have to say one thing that's obviously different when you get a lot of third-party resin models, they're a little bit more um, haphazard or a little bit dirtier in the printing you can tell that this is much smoother like you have no incidental resin or trails of resin that you usually have when you have other companies that print them uh, where they don't have machines that are as precise And yeah, you can't see it, but there's like little particles of resin that are all like floating in that water. So, you know, and, and you can see here, like this is probably the first area where you see a resin spike that will have to cut off. Or a little resin bridge. But even that little resin spike was like nothing. It was just to give that little bulge and uh, it's a little too, because that's how the resin prints when it prints structures. But where you're gonna see the biggest impact to a resin wash is gonna be in these areas. Because now, and it's you can start to see it, you actually see the crevices. So it gives the pores for the glue to dry, for all that other stuff to dry, which is extremely important when we are putting this together, which we will be doing in just a moment. And I hope you guys are enjoying this content. I know these are like shorter little videos. We're gonna definitely do some more like traditional uh, painting videos tonight. And I'll be painting for a while because I wanna get back to my Mega Gargant, which got a little bit of love. I did a little bit of my Mega Gargant off camera. So uh, he, has a little, he has a little bit further along. I tried to block out a lot of the skin so you guys could see me working on this um today's just been a weird day i have a lot of i don't even know how to get this off um i have a lot of like i'll call it oh geez okay i'll be drying that again um i have a lot of so this i would say is the only part that i don't like how they did the bit here because you can't i mean you might be able yeah 
it, you may be able to finagle it. But that's like a molded piece. So like I tried to pre-score it. That's what that's called. Um, but I don't, yeah. Yeah, see, that's what I don't like. I mean, you're effectively losing part. Like, I had to actually lose part of my, so I may have to do um, a little bit of filler here now to get that to look better. So, like, uh, sculpting it or modeling it with green stuff, I may have to do that just to make it not look so uh, janky before I prime it. Uh, what we could do is we could try to save the other one a little bit better. Yeah, because usually when they do stuff like this, like... Okay, maybe that was the... Okay, so the secret, I think, was to twist it. If you twist it, then you can just take off... But no, see, it's going to still... Yeah, see, iron. Maybe it is... Maybe they just... Okay, I guess they want you to do that. Maybe for variety, so it looks like it's a little bit more uneven. Since it's supposed to be, like, horns off of a creature. Um, I don't know. Okay, so we're seeing a little bit of a incidental resin. Uh, yeah, see? Wow, sorry guys, I'm trying to show you on camera. This is really hard. The, the way that they did the resin molding on this, I don't like this. So other companies don't do this, and that's probably why you get a little bit more residual resin on it. But like this, now granted, you could also have a better tool than I have to cut out your stuff. Like I could be using a more precise knife instead of just the, the cutters. Uh, you really should have like a sander and other stuff. But uh, I don't know. I never used all that crap. I just, I do it kind of in a, I guess that's the way to put it. I do it in a way that I feel is um, maybe a little bit more barbaric, <laughs> but it works for me. Um, all right, cool. Where is my blue? So let's see how well all right. So I make this mistake all the time with these models, which is I put glue on the bottom thinking that it's going to work. And it doesn't. You usually have to put a lot more glue. I noticed that in general. Um, and I don't know why with resin models, it just seems to be the truth that I have to put a lot more super glue. But it seems to be the truth. All right, so our giant stature is not bad. I mean, mm, it's probably about four or five feet, uh, five inches, not five feet. It's about four or five inches tall. If I had to, uh, if I had to give it, uh, and they are downward horns. Oops. All right. Ah, I'm doing, I'm doing all the gluing off camera. For the folks that come back and watch our videos, I thank you guys. Because I know sometimes I do not make it easy to come back. <laughs> I do a lot of stupid things. Like glue stuff off camera a lot. I had... Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> I had these guys. Which are exactly for this use. I, I had uh, Q-tips so I could even out... Oh, glue ideas. Okay. Whoa. When I put, when I put too much glue... Alrighty. Woo. I mean, very cool model. Great detail. And, I, and like I said, although he may not... Alright, hold on. So, I'll explain to everybody why he is not working. He's not working because if you look down there, they...
they did not cut this model properly. Yeah, I don't, well, I might be able to. So basically when they molded it, some extra resin got in there. So that extra resin is causing the model to not sit flush uh, in there. So now you probably notice, yeah, so see it's still not sitting flush. Now what I find is usually an easier way to deal with this problem is I'm just going to score Score this down. Let's see if that size it. Yeah, here we go. So a little trick, which I do a lot. Oh geez, <laughs> is I break my models so that I can put them back together in a very unique way. No, that's not what I do. Um, yeah, if you have like really problematic stuff like that where you have a seam that's uneven, I will sometimes do that. I will cut part of the model because again, depending on how it's built. If it's got that seam that's overlapping, it's not going to be bad for you to just shave off a little bit because there is some excess, excess, excess resin in the cre in the uh, hole that the piece fit in. So I just I'm like I'll just shave a little bit of that off, and then I get a nice correct fit. It's easy, simple, and again, it's inside of a model, so nobody's going to see it. It's okay. You will not be graded because, you know, because it happens. You know, manufacturing, there is an, uh, you know, whenever you manufacture anything or, oh, whoops, or you have statistics about something, oh, Jesus, um, there is what's called a margin of error. And a margin of error exists in everything. Yeah, but really cool model. I really like him. Um, like I said, he's going to fill in for my uh, Sons of Behemoth army. So even though this is a D&D &D video, really, I, my goal of building him is primarily for a Warhammer army. So if, you were, uh, if you're were, if you not familiar with uh, GW and their stuff, uh, they actually just made a giant army. So all, the, all your pieces are giant, um, which I think is super duper cool. Um, and so my part of my reason So part of my reason for buying this wonderful, very cool model, um, whoops. Well, originally my reason for buying this really cool model is that there were other giant models out there that I wanted. Um, and they were unfortunately sold out. Um, and, and, and actually I shouldn't say unfortunately they're sold out. They kind of still are sold out. <laughs> So uh, I bought this guy because I happened to be in my local gaming store and uh, I saw this on the shelf and, um, you know, it only retails for $40. So I was like, ooh, $40, a giant for $40, like sign me up now because to pay $40 for a, mo a giant model or a larger model uh, is uh, pretty good. All right, so what we're going to do, because that just failed miserably is I'm going to glue the hands on first. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, what happens is, uh, Jesus, I don't think I can fix this problem. So what they did was when they built this, um, I don't know, maybe it's just not fitting right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that this warped a little bit. So you can fix this, you can heat the plastic. You can heat the, mm, you can heat the resin. But, uh, well, no. If it was plastic, you can 100% heat it. If it's resin, you can't really do that. Um, and I'll tell you why. If you heat resin, it does not do the same thing like when you heat plastic. Um, it actually, uh, you can, well, the byproduct of the resin is that it's actually more toxic than the plastic. I mean, plastic's toxic too when you burn it. But, um, so yeah, uh, there is not... I mean, what I could do, maybe I just 
did it. If I can introduce a little bit more bend. So uh, what I what I could do, I don't have a rubber, I always never have a rubber band when I want one. Uh, I could rubber band it. That's another way to do it. So if you if you rubber band the hands in place, I'm sorry guys, I'm like not showing you anything. If you if you were to rubber band the hands in place, you can set it there. That's probably the better way to do this. I mean, it's not terrible. It, I mean, it won't look bad because he's going to be angled. So it's not the end of the world. Like, you're always going to see it up. So you're not going to necessarily see that. I could also green stuff that to fill it. Um, if you're a GW model builder, you might know what green stuff is. Green stuff is basically just uh, material that you can model and mold. I'm just going to put a little bit more glue on this. Because we're like, uh, we're like done. This was going to be, I mean, I knew this was going to be a quick video. Sorry. I know this is like janky and weird and, and I left this base in way too long. All right. Let me let him dry a little bit. So again, you can see, now this is still very shiny. Um, but I did wash it. I did put it in, so. But you can see him in all of his glory on the base. And like I said, decent size. He's not, he's not like a, uh, he's not a midget giant um but he is a lot he is a, a little bit on the smaller side he is on a little bit of the more meek side if you will of um you know of giants so i'm getting as though i can get that i won't spill this on myself oh i made it i made it i made it all right so you guys can see him while i'm Situating, yeah, this is just not the best solution at all. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry guys, there's just a lot of moving pieces to what I'm doing right now, and I want to, and I unfortunately, like I said, I have to do this video a little on the quicker side. Um, we're gonna be back with some more video stuff later. Uh, he's got a sword that I didn't glue on yet, which we will figure out where that's supposed to go. All right, but uh, you can at least see, and I'm going to go to my wider angle so you guys can see him in comparison to our other giant for scale. So again, not bad. He's going to work out for what I wanted him to. So, you know, and what I was trying to figure out from him is that I think he works on the right base so I can get that ice base to be on the appropriate i just have to look up what the other giants appropriate base size is um but yeah he's gonna work totally fine uh to be one of the other giants so that i can have my mega my sons of behemoth army and what's cool is that i'm i'm deliberately doing it so they're all different types of giants um so it's not just the gw models doing it there and it also will give me a little cost effective way to do it because the reality, too, is, and I've said this on other streams, that I'm not a big fan of GW's other giants. I think these are awesome. I think the Mega Gargant was beautiful, and they did a really nice job with it. Um, but I'm not I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of some of their other... Um, some of the other model kits that they have. Because basically, for folks that are not familiar with GW, they made this nice, beautiful Mega Gargant model, and then they basically took... Uh, they had some previous giant models, and they just stuck them in the army so that it gave players um, some more options, which I'm all for that. I'm all for getting, you know, different options for your army and getting different models for your army. Um, but, you know, um, I, I want the models to look good. So I thought it would be cooler to have some dynamics uh, where... I picked up some other giants from other systems. So there's quite a lot of people doing giants. 
um, and specifically doing like very innovative cool giants. Um, so I wanted to be on that train. You can see, so I, I sort of showed off now where we got to the me Mega Gargant. Um, I just really got into, I love his toenails. I got into the toenails, the feet. We're going to start working his skin tone a little bit more. We got some of that, as we said, comedic value with some of the goblins trying to run out of the way of our Mega Gargant and um, our stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to going further with that. Um, and, you know, this is going to be a fun army, an army that I can show off, but then also for scenarios because... Uh, like I said, he's going to be a dual purpose model, um, which is going to work for my Sons of Behemoth, but also is going to work for my other um, armies, uh, whether I'm playing Kings of War or whether I'm even just doing scenario play for RPGs. So obviously I can use it for its intended purposes of being a monster that you guys encounter in an adventure that I am DMing. So uh, yeah, that's going to be annoying to me. The sword bent, so I don't know. And of course, if I try to fix it, I'm going to fix it once it's dry. Um, it'll probably break. But uh, yeah, so that is my review. Uh, in general, the Cross Giant uh, Ravager is a good model. Uh, for 40 bucks. I think it's definitely worth the buy. It's nice and detailed. It's solid. Um, you know, it is well made. Uh, just some really cool stuff. And like I said, what I really like about it is that um, I can use it in so many different games. Uh, I could even use it in Marvel Crisis Protocol, like, because it just could be a frost giant, you know, so it's got a lot of uses. So I think it's a really nice steal if you can find one. Um, and obviously, if you're a collector, it's a, you know, like I said, limited edition model, so you may want to keep it for those reasons. I'm busting them open the box because uh, I do play D&D, &D, uh, and I'm, I, I want, you know, for this channel at least, I want to get more elaborate and definitely get D&D &D in the flesh when we can. Um, so please, please, please. Uh, as always, if you like this content, uh, think about giving us a follow on the channel uh, by also signing up for notifications. You'll know when we're live because, as you guys can see, I was live twice today and very random times. Sometimes I'm live late at night. I'm going to try to standardize the times, but there's just some days where that doesn't work. Um, and we have a lot of different content on the channel. So not only are we doing model reviews and tabletop reviews, uh, we do RPG nights, we do video game playthroughs. Uh, toy reviews, Magic the Gathering uh, unboxing packs, unboxing toys, um, and eventually we're going to get into full battle reports and other content, uh, and also campaign-related content, so taking this stuff and really running some dynamic campaign and original content. Um, so if you are a fan of D&D, &D, 40K, independent RPGs, uh, video games, toys, uh, creative painting and drawing and art, uh, then I am the channel for you. We do all those different types of things, and I will try to interweave more of it as we go. Uh, and uh, please consider following us and knowing more. And check out our other videos, obviously. Don't just take my word for it. Uh, and there's some other links below, uh, things like my YouTube channel, um, my Facebook, and others. The YouTube right now is just kind of archiving the videos we have on the channel. Uh, but um, I will start putting original stuff up there as well. Um, and then you'll also see some links to my Patreon and my website. Those are some monetary ways to support us. Monetary support is very important as well. And I will be honest, for me to grow and do this on a more full-time basis, that monetary support is important. Uh, I know that that's something that's a little tough for people right now. So like I said, a follow, a share, a like, uh, and just telling other folks about us to share that content so they can come and see it themselves is awesome. And I really appreciate it. Um, but that monetary support, of course, allows me to buy more models. It allows me to buy more uh, more uh, things that I need, uh, materials. Uh, allows because although uh, I do have some some folks that help out, like again, I want to give a shout out to Undiscovered Realms in New York, uh, the Westchester area, for being the place that I was able to actually buy both these models. So without them, I wouldn't have these models to review for you. Uh, and uh, they are a great place. Please check them out. My, and again, that's undiscoveredrealms.com. They ship to anywhere in the United States, so you can buy from them if you're not in the, uh, in uh, New York. Uh, and they do Funko Pops, they do gaming, they do collectible card games, they do all kinds of stuff, vintage toys. They're really cool guys. Uh, check them out. Um, and then also, um, you know, I want to give a thanks to Mantic Games, who I will be doing some more videos with models that they sent me, and thanks for that review. But again, those are just a small population of the folks that I, I do uh, content from. You know, I grab a lot of different stuff. So like Wizards of the Coast does not sponsor my videos. Um, so yeah, that monetary support is really helpful. Um, and then again, guys, as always, please stay safe. Wash your hands. 
And please respect all the folks on this planet because without all of us working together, we will not be able to solve the problems of tomorrow. So take care, everybody. We'll see you very, very soon. And I hope to see you later tonight at our next video where we'll be going and further with our Mega Gargan Giant. So it will be a giant theme day, lots of giant models, lots of giant stuff. Please stay tuned.